Soldering is not very hard. This video will cover the basic soldering techniques for electronic and electrical wiring. First, you need to get a pencil type soldering iron for this sort of work. Pencil soldering irons come in wattages from 20 to 60 watts and are generally inexpensive. Higher wattage irons generate more heat. I suggest a 30 to 40 watt pencil soldering iron for general purpose wiring and electronic repairs. I'm going to use this 40 watt chisel tip weller soldering iron today. You also need rosin core solder. Don't use any other kind of solder for wiring or electronics. This particular spool of solder comes from Radio Shack. It's 60% tin and 40% lead mix. There's also lead free solder available if you're concerned about lead. Solder also comes in various diameters. This solder is 0 0.062 inches in diameter and I think is a pretty good choice for wiring and general purpose electrical electronics use. Well, what I like to do, this is a one pound spool. It's a little large and hard to handle, so generally what I'll do is I'll unwind a section of the spool around my hand so that it's easier to handle. Now, the real secret to soldering is really just keeping the tip of your soldering iron tinned. Tinning is melting solder directly onto the tip of your soldering iron. And tinning prevents the tip from oxidizing, so you should always keep your soldering iron tip tinned. Tinning also ensures that the heat is efficiently transferred from the tip of the iron to the joint being soldered. Now to tin the soldering iron tip, you just melt solder directly onto the hot iron tip. But this is the only time you apply solder directly to the iron tip. You want fresh solder on the tip just before you actually solder. You need to make sure you clean the excess solder off the tip before adding new solder. Now. I've just tinned the tip here. I prefer to clean this excess solder off my tip onto a magazine or a scrap piece of paper like I have here. I just flick it like that and the excess solder comes off. Some soldering iron stands have sponges that you dampen and you can use to wipe off the excess solder. We first prepare the joint to be soldered. For this demonstration I'm going to make an inline solder joint with stranded wire. First, you strip off about three quarters inch of insulation off both ends of the wire and then you twist the strands together on each end to make sure they're tight. Then you overlap the wires about halfway and twist them onto each other in opposite directions to make this nice inline splice. Now when you're soldering wire connections you always need to be sure to make a good physical connection before you solder. The alternative to this inline splice is a pigtail splice which you just take the wires lay them side by side and then twist them together. I think the inline splice makes a nicer splice, that's why I'm going to do it that way in this demonstration. The next thing you do is you need to secure the wires before you try to solder it so it doesn't move around. I'm going to use this alligator clip third hand device. The first thing we do prior to soldering is tin the tip of the soldering iron. Then I knock off the excess solder and then lightly tin the tip again. I then place the tin tip of the soldering iron firmly against the wire. The idea is to use the iron to heat the wire then melt the solder onto the heated wire. Never touch the solder to the tip of the iron while you're actually soldering. The solder only touches the joint you're soldering. As you can see, once the joint is heated up, the solder will flow onto the joint. Don't try to push or paste the solder onto the joint. Just touch the solder to the joint until it starts melting and let it flow onto the joint. A good solder joint will have solder completely melted onto it and be shiny silver. That's it.